pop that uh, rotor brake for me? Yep. Thank you, sir. So I got the altimeter breakers. Uh. Clear. Oh. A few more squirts. Yeah, actually, that sounds a little bit low pitch. One more try before. if it's any different down at Auburn, but uh, yeah, gotta have a little wind. Make that call, get us on out of here, Papa. Okay. Boeing Tower Helicopter 41 Whiskey Bravo, H and W ramp, uh, Rainier departure with Papa. 41 Whiskey Bravo, Boeing Tower Roger, hold position, inbound helicopter. 41 Whiskey Bravo, holding position, inbound helicopter in sight. Uh, let's turn that up a little bit. Yeah, go ahead. Mike off Lehman, Boeing Tower, runway 14 right, clear land. Mike one with Bravo, pad 5, Rainier departure approved. Pad 5, Rainier approved. Forward Scoot Bravo. Alright, let's get up. I'm going to kind of help you out on this one because we're real close to him. Yeah. I was hoping maybe he'd park in a different spot, but... I can 
feel things happening at a much lower manifold pressure today. Yeah. Which is what we were just talking about. Yep, that's exactly right. That needs a little left. Ooh. All right, let's get up and over here. And we're clear left. All right, so let's get, oh yeah, man, it's windy. Yeah. All right, so nice normal takeoff from here. Okay. All right. Easier forward. Yep. Boeing Tower, Hotel 447, Romeo Charlie, ECW, Rainier, Departure with Papa, got one with you, Bravo. 447, Romeo Charlie, Boeing Tower, Roger, at 5, Rainier, Departure Crew. 7, Romeo Charlie. That was better than I've done for a while. Yeah, not bad. Alright, let's keep bringing her up. Would you say we had 20, 22 and a half, 23 and a half, or? Uh, it's it's more like, I haven't turned that down a little bit. Okay, fine, one, four, left, click back, Alright, we got six, 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 one is going to actually dry out. Phase zero four shot, we found a three mile final parallel Lear jet. All right, we got oil pressure. Oil temp's a little low, but it's coming up. Cylinder head is looking good. Ammeter showing a charge. We got fuel. Lights are out. 104. Fire beats adjusted. I don't know if I told you or not, but I'm uh, I, I'm kind of like sort of allowed back at Auburn now. What do you mean? Uh, uh, um, I don't know if I told you about it or not, but uh, fuck, it was like back in I don't know early December maybe or something. Yeah. Uh, I was down there with Allison one day. We were doing uh, 180 autos, and uh, one of them like uh, so basically when we do 180s, you know how we, where we go, we go out and do that big pattern. Yeah. Well, there's right. some buildings that are close in. Uh, they're right over, right, right uh, on the inside of like where the racetrack is. So we always come down the middle there. We call it a close in downwind. And uh, so we're coming down there, and we're getting ready to enter the auto. We usually enter a beam the windsock. And there's a, a guy on final. He had just landed. So like, okay, he, let's give him a minute to get off the runway. So instead of entering a beam the windsock, we'll enter a beam the numbers. So we kept going. Got a beam the numbers. Entered our entered our, uh, our auto. To the 180, come come down around, and we get down to the runway, and he's still on it. So, um, oops. Yeah, well, so, kind of misjudged the timing a little bit. Thought he would be out of the fucking way already, but he was slow, so he wasn't. Uh, so I was like, okay, so let's just sidestep over to the grass. So we kind of dropped it, and then came over to the grass. And uh, and then from there, we kind of just uh, did like a, kind of a modified air taxi a little bit, and just uh, kind of kept going, and then took off. And... Apparently, the guy in the airplane, he was a flight instructor and had a student, apparently we scared his student. And uh, his student almost had to, or had to hit the toe brakes and could have nosedived into the, into the fucking runway or some stupid shit. So this guy calls me and uh, he, he calls, he, he called Helicopters Northwest that day and uh, Rich happened to answer the phone and so he asked me, he was like, were you down there with Allison today? He was like, yeah, he was like, this guy called and he was all upset, said you landed behind him or something like, I don't know where else you're supposed to land, but behind him sounds pretty good. <laughs> like, yeah, it's a fucking good point. Yeah. So I called the guy back, didn't give him my name, um, but I was just, you know, like, hey, yeah, I was the pilot that was down there today and uh, he was just, yeah, give me a whole earful about how uh, it scared his, his uh, student and... Um, and that, you know, like, like that, that was an unsafe maneuver. I was like, well, I'm in a helicopter, so I'm very maneuverable, and I know at no point in time was, like, unsafe or unsafely close to you or anything like that. And, uh, and he 
say, well, I mean, not everybody knows how, you know, my student doesn't necessarily know how the, how the, hell, you know, how the helicopter works, and it, it doesn't really matter. You know, when you're that close, you scare him. He hits the toe brakes, and, you know, we could, we could you know, uh, nosedive into the pain. Like, well, don't be a little fucking bitch. So basically, I never really apologized to the guy. I was just like, well, hey, look, my intention was never to scare your student. I know I was a safe distance away. Like, I'll make sure to, you know, stay a little farther next time. Um... And, uh, and then he just started saying, well, you know, since it's general aviation, you know, we all have to kind of work together. Like, yeah, we do. So don't be a little bitch. Learn how helicopters work and, you know, shut the fuck up. Uh, obviously, I didn't say that to him, but, you know, so I was, I was I kept it copacetic. Well, a couple weeks ago, Doug, uh, I guess, got a call from the FAA. And they had a video of the whole incident. Uh, Auburn Airport has a nest cam up on top of uh, one of the buildings there, so like, it's pointing like right at that midfield. Oh, uh, okay. And in the video, it's like a straight-on shot, so there's no depth to it whatsoever. Yeah. And so in the video, it almost looks like I'm like flying right over the top of the guy or something. Okay, and just a second here. Long Acres Traffic Helicopter 4 on Whiskey Bravo, southbound crossing I-405, 600 feet, Long Acres. Yeah, so it looked like, yeah, so it looked from like the perspective it. of the camera, it looked Long like you were... 7 Romeo Charlie's, Todd of Piles, 700 southbound, got one Whiskey Bravo, Long Acres. How was she at the sawdust piles? She did she did you ever see her overpass us? Overtake us? Uh she was in a going up in a forty four. Yeah, but did you ever see her pass us? I did not. How the fuck is she at the sawdust piles? <laughs> I don't know. I also don't see her. Does she maybe not know what the sawdust piles are? And if she has us in sight, then that means she's fucking behind us. I think she's behind us and somehow called the sawdust piles for some reason. We'll make our call at the sawdust piles when we get there and see what she has to say. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, so exactly. It looks like I'm flying over him almost. But if you look at the size of the airplane versus the size of the helicopter, you can clearly fucking tell that we were way far enough away. Yeah, right. And so what I, what I do anytime that, and uh, you may remember, not, I've never specifically said it out loud, I just kind of tell you where to go, which is what I do with most, most of my students, but if we're in the grass, so you know there's the, the exit from the, the the runway to the taxiway, yeah, and there's right. the, the whole short line there, right? Right. So what I do is I, I visually extend that whole short line through the grass, and yeah. I put my yeah, students yeah. on the taxiway side of the whole short line if we're in the grass, so that way we're not on the runway side of the grass, so that we're far enough away there's plenty of separation. And that's where we were when we did this auto. So in my mind, we were 100% safe, because what's the difference if I'm in the grass or on the exit, if I'm on the taxiway if side you're, you're of the whole you're not in the um, active runway exactly. whatsoever. Exactly. So in my mind, I did nothing fucking wrong. So, but like I said, Doug got, they sent him the video, and, uh, and they, he, so he sent it to me, and I was just kind of like, oh shit, I didn't know there was a video of it, and I kind of like laughed a little bit, he's like, the feds want to call it reckless endangerment. It's like, oh, what the fuck? So he freaked me the hell out, so I called him, and he was just like, what was that? So like, I explained to him, you know, what happened and stuff, and I was like, I don't think I did anything wrong. You can go make your sonos pals. Long Acres traffic helicopter for on Whiskey Bravo, southbound, sonos pals, Long Acres. Um, but I, so yeah, so I, you know, I explained everything to him, and uh, that whole day, man, I was just freaking the fuck out. I was like, my stomach was in knots. I, oh, uh, yeah, reckless endangerment. That yeah. Was like, it, that's like, that's like you're in big, deep shit. Yeah, like, potentially lose my license, um, <clears throat> potentially even have jail time. Really? Depending on the severity of it, yeah. Wow. I was, cause I started Googling it, I started looking up like cases of reckless endangerment with flying, and there's some people that have gotten jail time for it. It was like, oh my God. So I was freaking the fuck out, man. And then the next day, uh, I came in and I actually got to sit and chat with him for a minute. He's like, no, no, you're not, you're not gonna lose your license or anything like that. Like, if, at most, they might make you go to a couple meetings down in Auburn or something like that, like with the airport manager and all the different people. Um, 
And the other thing that he told me that I did not know <laughs> is that Auburn Airport, the like all of the uh, the airplane guys that hangar their planes down there and everything, like they all fucking hate helicopters. And really? they, they've been trying to get helicopters out of Auburn Airport for like decades. Helicopter seven, Romeo Charlie's. Really? Miles, 600 southbound. Got one with you, Bravo. I didn't yes. catch that. She's at the Sonus Files, so oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know why she called the Sonus Files earlier. It was just a mess up, or I, I don't know, but that's kind of weird. Um, uh, but yeah, so, so he said, you know, I might have to go to a couple meetings down there or something, and now it's been a little while, and he's like, I still haven't heard anything from him. He's like, usually if it's a couple weeks, they're not going to do anything at that point. He's like, okay, well, that's good, but the, you know, the FAA is super slow to act on stuff. Yeah. Um, but uh, but basically, uh, he told me to stay out of Auburn for a while. <laughs> so, so I was like, okay. So then I talked to him this week, and I was like, so I've got Jeff, you know, on Saturday. That's kind of a, you know, that's where we go do our training. Helicopter, seven Romeo Charlie's, Sawdust uh, Files, southbound training, northbound long years. What the fuck? Is she doing a demo? She must be on a demo. Yeah. It's kind of funny because now it sounds like she's been. I think she was because I, I remember her coming to a guy and saying, I'll be your instructor today. Oh, uh, okay. So. Yeah, but three different times she's at the sawdust piles. Like, uh, Apex traffic said that throwing out the final. Auburn traffic helicopter four and Whiskey Bravo, four to the north, inbound for landing, Auburn. But, uh, yeah, so. So I talked to him, he was like, you know, it's just, just, we don't want to step on anybody's toes, we don't want to piss anybody off, we don't want to get kicked out of Auburn. We, you know, that would be pretty shitty, because this is the, the closest place we have to train. Otherwise, we'd end up having to go to Crest, or, uh, or like, Bremerton or something. Well, who is it that, um, I mean, it's Auburn Municipal, right? So the, the city owns it, but yep. who are the people that... All the fucking hell, uh, uh, airplane guys that, that like hang their planes there and shit, they're the ones who go to the meetings every month and the ones who bitch about everything. And so, and if the airport uh, manager is the one who reported it, reported it to the FAA, so. Okay, so probably a pretty sure bet that we're going to be going in on 1-6. Uh, yep, yep. Bravo, two to the north, inbound for landing, one six Auburn. Okay. Auburn traffic helicopter four one whiskey Bravo turning uh, right base to final one six Auburn.
Traffic 105, uh, 5 miles east, going to cross over the field and enter uh, right traffic for 1, 6, over. Absolutely hands fucking down the best approach you've ever done, period. Thank you, sir. That's commercial standards right there. You just passed the commercial check right for your approach. All right? That's fucking outstanding. Okay, I'm gonna do another one? Let's go do another one. Fucking outstanding. Dude, you're, you're the, moving the collective up and down like you had the, the correct amounts on a lot. There's a couple different times where uh, a little effort cross field boundary, like, oh, he's speeding up a little bit. Is he going to catch that? And you did. You brought it back. And you just continued slowing down. Uh, as we started getting down below 30, uh, the descent rate started going up a little bit. And you started pulling up on collective. And you just kind of milked it up and down. That, like, that was fucking perfect. Well, thank you. Do that shit every time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Absolutely. Now, did you say commercial or private? Commercial. All right. You were right next to the windsock. Private is within 100 feet of your landing spot. Commercial is within 50 feet of your landing spot. You were right fucking next to it. I really wasn't even looking at the windsock. That's good. That's what you should be doing. You kind of use it in your peripheral. You kind of, you know where it is. Just, you know, you don't have to like focus on it and look at it and think about it. You just kind of, all right, that's where I'm going. And you just put yourself there. And that's exactly what you did. Fuck yeah, man. Good job. Turn. We're, we're high, but you kept it consistent all the way through the turn. You didn't, you didn't, uh, you didn't climb or uh, climb or descend or do anything funky. That was that was solid. Auburn traffic helicopter four one whiskey Bravo uh, right downwind one six Auburn lights out one zero four three green all the way up. Uh, beats adjusted. And there's no fuel gushing out of the tank. Yeah, that's a good thing. All right, so I, got, I had a guy, I don't see him at the moment, he's crossing midfield, and I heard the one other guy, I thought said he was coming in on the 45. But I don't see anybody. All right, so we'll... Uh, Auburn traffic 1 until Papa entering the 45 to Water Towers, right traffic 1 6, Auburn. Water Towers, that's a ways away, is yeah, it not? He's, he's behind us. <laughs> then go ahead and make your right base call. Auburn traffic helicopter 4 1 Whiskey Bravo, uh, right base 1 6, Auburn. Downwind 1-6, Auburn. Alright, so we got a guy in downwind. Yep, don't worry about him. You just do what you're doing. Auburn traffic helicopter, 4-1 Whiskey Bravo, final 1-6, Auburn.
Number traffic, one until Papa turning base, one six following the traffic. Well, I was just thinking if this guy has half a brain in his head, he'll extend his downwind and then they call base, so he doesn't have half a brain in his head. Nice job, man. All right, take me over the grass. Let's get out of the way. Ah, still a win again. Armored traffic four and Whiskey Bravo, clear the active. All right, controls are yours. Okay. Nice job, man. That's two in a row. Thank you. Thank you. You must have been doing a touch and go. Yeah. The camera, I think, is like, must be right up on top of one of these buildings. Because it was pointed, it was, maybe that's it. It was pointed right at that one. No, it had to be it was straight on, though. Maybe it's on top of that building. Not really sure. Go ahead. Oop. Trying to get us down to our... We're like six inches. You want to bring us up to about three feet. Oh, I was trying to get the speed down a little bit, too. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Cover traffic, cut with one until Papa turning crosswind, uh, right to 1-6, touch and go, Auburn. So if the wind is coming out of the south, where I'm going to have the most trouble is when the tail rotor is pointed right at the wind. Yeah, so if I'm turning, if I'm like doing a pedal I'm turn. Oh, but when you're doing a pedal turn. I'm going to make sure to approach for one six Uh Well, depends on what you mean by trouble. So, well, we'll, go, we'll go over here and we'll do a clearing turn. I want, I want you to feel what that's going to be like. So basically the way that's going to work, is uh that, that's what i mean is when the <clears throat> that's when the wind's gonna if i'm not on top of it it's gonna want to whip me around if i'm not on top of the pedals so yeah when, when the tail rotor is facing the wind but when it's when it's thrust is going in the same direction so what, what, what well, when the thrust is going oh not against it but with it Correct, yeah. So we'll go over here, we'll do a 360 degree uh, uh, pedal turn. And, we'll, oh sorry, we'll do it to the left. And you'll see when you get to where you're taking a direct right crosswind, uh, that's gonna be where it's gonna be really tough. You're gonna have to like push a lot of pedal in. And then all of a sudden once you, once you get past a certain, uh, certain angle, then it's going to want to whip you around. So you, then you all of a sudden have to back way off on the pedals. Auburn traffic, water tilt, Papa, turning short, final 1-6, Auburn. You'll, you'll feel it when we get over there.
All right, take me out in the middle here. Would you give me a left pedal turn, face me right into the wind? Oh, ducks and geese. All kinds of bird strike opportunities yeah, today. Yeah, we need to be real careful of that. I mean, they usually get kind of, they'll kind of start walking away. But there's a lot of them over there. <clears throat> All right. Uh, you can see the flag up there. Uh, it's actually almost coming out of that way. It's coming out of the southeast. Looks a little... I don't know. I wonder if it's a little uh, less windy down here. It, it's definitely possible. It doesn't feel as bad, but taking off out of Boeing is always bad because you get all that all that wind busting off all the hangers there, and it just makes everything everything worse. All right, so according to that flag, yeah, it's kind of coming out of the southeast. So let's point point at that direction of the flag, and then let's do let's do a 360 degree turn to the left. Theoretically, I need to really be on top of the pedals right about. So here's where it's going to get hard. Here. You're going to have to put a lot of pedal in to get it to keep turning, and then all of a sudden it's going to want to pop and like whip on you. Yeah, I can feel that. Yep. I had to, there's a, a spot there where I had to really push. Yep. As, as soon as you get past that is where it wants to just take it on you. You just had to be cognizant, okay, I know I'm pushing in a bunch of pedal right now. That means real soon it's going to pop and I'm going to have to back way off on the pedal so I don't whip around. There you go, nice job. Nice job. So you Thank can, you. You get to feel where that is. So let's just kind of hang out here for a second. All right. And I just uh, let's pick a spot on the ground and stay over top of it. Albert, I want to still pop a turning base, one six short approach, Albert. So I want you to hold a good hover, and I want you to start to nudge it forward, and I mean like even less than you do for a takeoff or a hover taxi. Like just barely nudge it forward, give us just the tiniest bit of forward motion. Short approach, hover. Just keep coming down on that collective. Keep that just little tiny bit of forward motion. Not bad, sir. Not bad. In the wind. Not bad. Still kind of <laughs> still kind of sticking it a little bit, so we need to keep working to smooth it out. Yeah. Um, but at least for now, your your hovering's getting better too. Um, it's still not perfectly steady yet, uh, but that little tiny bit of forward movement. Kinda, it'll kind of help you. Especially if you're in, if it's windy. Yeah. And yeah, that makes it all that much easier. Yeah, and even, even if it's not windy at all. Oh, it's just, uh, two zero zero five three it's, it's it's just a little one, easier six, to kind of get a little bit of forward motion and just like than it is to like hold it perfectly steady and just come straight down. So we're gonna kind of start doing set downs like that for a little while. Okay. Until we get that hover perfectly steady. Um, I think that'll make it a little easier. Sorry, my hands are a little... I've been uh, playing electrician all week on our new edition and oh, swinging a hammer, putting staples in. Oh, yeah. That'll, uh, that'll tire your hands out for so, sure. Oh, shit. Yeah, there's a... One of the tools I have, it's really easy to... It's like for cutting wire and stripping it. Oh. It's so easy to get... There's one spot where... 
it'll pinch you every single time. Oh. It's like, ah. Oh, that sucks. You gotta get some good thick gloves or something. Yeah, but then I can't feel what I'm doing. Ah, uh, fair enough. I cleared it right up. There we go. All right. All right, pick us on up. Number seven, one to jump up and move downwind, one six over. I'm going to jump off, uh, going to make a short approach for 1-6 to a full stop, Albert. Still, still one thing that seems to be consistent is every time we pick up, we yaw right. So what does that tell you? That means I'm not giving it quite enough left pedal. Exactly uh, right. Exactly while right. I'm light on the skids. Well, not necessarily while you're light on the skids. It's when you start pulling more power when you go to pick oh, up. Oh, pull more power, yes. Yeah. So if you get right. light on the skids and we're neutralized, we're not moving anywhere, then that's the correct amount. But once you go to pull more and start picking us up the ground, then you're going to need more left pedal. Right. So if you're right. just holding the pedal where it was when we were light on the skids, then yeah, that, that's why we're. And so that's what I was doing. I wasn't giving it any extra, like yep. like I should have. So bring us down again. Bit, a little bit sideways swing there, but still not too bad. Yeah, I saw, I, I felt I was going to the left. Yep, and I saw you way down. I thought, okay, I have enough space to just do a little bit of correction. So you, you did correct, but you corrected a little bit too much. Yeah. So you caught it, and it was a good time. That was all good, but yeah, it was just a little bit too much on the correction. So just a little bit smaller next time, and then we won't swing back the other way. It'll just stop us. Right. Okay, let's see if I can not yaw. Whatsoever. No, let's not see. Let's just do it. Huh? So let's not see. Let's just do it. Yeah, we'll just do it. Harbor traffic, cover front, tail pop up at 1 6, texting back to 1 6. Harbor. Pedals are good. Pedals are good. Uh, let's get back out in the middle. What's that? Uh, let's get back behind us. Get out in the middle. Oh, yeah. Okay. Getting a little blue sky today. Yeah, look at that. Fucking Washington, man. You get every, every weather in one day. Yeah, but you were saying like in Vegas you can get those uh Yeah, you get more like, soon like season. these thunderstorms that come crashing through. Yeah, it's crazy. So I would imagine if one of those is on the way you're you're grounded at least for well probably not very long, but Uh yeah, when there's yeah, a big lightning storm like that, yeah, you're not you're not playing around that. Do they know like uh commercial airliners, they get struck by lightning all the time, but if one of these guys got a direct hit, yeah, that'd be, I, uh, we'd be fucking dead. Yeah. 
Is, it, is that really a common thing? Commercial airliners get struck? Oh yeah, all the time. And it's not an issue? Like they? It's not an issue. No shit. Well, you're basically inside a Faraday cage. Okay. I guess that's a fair point. I never really thought about that. Bring us on down. Sorry, what? Bring us on down. Got it. Best set down you've ever done. Best set down you've ever done. You were holding us in a super stable fucking hover right there. We were just talking and you weren't thinking, you were just doing it. And then yeah. I was like, all right, cool, set us down. That was that was perfect. Perfect set down. Well, like I mentioned to you once, I'll go like weeks and weeks and weeks and I'm not getting it, I'm not getting it and and, and you know, my instructor probably thinks, Oh this guy's never gonna get it and then all of a sudden it'll click and I'll be able to do it. Well, I think today might be that day. Everything's been just solid today, so good. And it's, I mean, I know it's been a few weeks since the, like, but, yeah, it's been, through the turn since that clicked. Yeah. That was like a month or so ago. And that clicked, and you've been doing it ever since. So if you keep doing everything like you're doing today, we start moving on to other maneuvers. Okay, that was... Same deal with the pedal on that one. We got that big yaw to the right, just not enough pedal after we picked up, after we started. Picking. Yeah, but didn't I have a little too much uh, left, uh, left a little cyclic? Too much, yeah, a little too much left cyclic. Okay. All right, do it again. Nice job, sir. Nice job. That feel good? It should. It feels wonderful. Good. Most fun you can have with your pants on. <laughs> That's fucking true. As soon as you feel that nose catching up, which you've been doing, you've been doing the other times. I felt that a couple times the nose started coming up, and you corrected forward. So that one was just getting a little, uh, little, little much there. All right, do it again. I mean, don't do that again, but pick us up again. <laughs> We're kind of coming ass up there. So I'm gonna do something real quick. Go ahead and actually, uh, never mind. Be good. You're good, you're good. All right, set us down one more time. Nice job. All right, real quick, I got the controls. Okay, you got the controls. I want you to close your eyes. All right. All right, you tell me what you feel like the helicopter is doing. Not yet. 
Let me get us land on the skids. All right. Tell me what you think the helicopter is doing. Okay, yawing to the right. Backwards. cyclic forward or back, that's where you get this kind of stuff. You're like, oh, oh, we're coming up on the heels there, don't want that. Yeah. Oh, oh, we're coming down on the nose here, don't want that. So you just, as soon as you feel that, either or, as soon as you feel it rocking, just fix that. Bring it right back to center so we're, so we're square on the ground with all four, all four corners. Got it. Yeah, I'm going to start us off a little lower here. Yep. That one we had, uh, there was some forward cyclic in there, and uh, you kind of didn't really correct it, and then you just kind of let us pop up. So let's do that again. Okay. All right, controls are all yours. thinking about anything. Pick us up, feel the helicopter. That's, that's what I'm talking about. When you, as soon as you feel that starting to come up, you got to fix that. But that's, you, you let that keep going, you're going to put the tail yeah, on Yeah, because if you do, you do that, you can, right. It's like dynamic rollover. We don't want to go there. Correct. The pedal, the pedal. 
Not bad, not bad. All right, let's go do something different. Let's get your mind out there because we did a bunch of really good ones. I don't want to do it too much to where you're, you know, starting, starting to get, get uh, tired or whatever, and then you start doing no good because then it destroys your confidence. You've done a whole bunch of really good pickups and set downs today. Okay. So let's uh, take me out to the runway. All righty. I do not hear anybody out here today. I haven't heard any radio calls the whole time we've been. Yeah, nothing. Uh, so let's go down. Uh, go down to like the uh, two taxiway or two the, the windsock one. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's go down to that one. So when you have instrument students and Boeing Field is IFR, do you guys go up anyways? Nope. Or do you go up in VFR and teach how to use the instruments? That's exactly what we do. So Robinson helicopters are not rated to fly actual IFR at all. Oh, okay. But yep. you can have an instrument trainer. Yep. That's exactly what it is. So yeah, the whole time that we're doing IFR practice, it's always 100% in VFR. Yeah, the only way to get, um, as far as training-wise, the only way to get, like, actual IFR experience is to do it in an airplane. Uh, or a really expensive helicopter that's rated if, yeah, for IFR. Yeah, exactly, if you have that. But, yeah, for normal training stuff, airplane's the way to do it. So, Jeff, uh, he's actually, the other, uh, the, the instructor, Jeff, he, uh, um, he's been actually going and taking some, uh, some instrument airplane lessons. Uh, just so that he can actually go actual IFR, get to experience what it's like. And uh, he said it's, it's, it's just super different. When you really are in the cloud and you really can't see anything, he said, it's just weird. And you have to. Have to pay attention to your instruments. There's also um, spatial disorientation that you have to worry about. Oh, yeah. I, I read some stuff about that. Yep. Where... Well, like uh, the famous example of JFK Jr. Oh, yeah, that's the, right. He the himself, didn't the he? Death, what do they call it? The death spiral? Uh, or graveyard spiral. Graveyard spiral. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, those things you got to be Because you're, you know, the... over the ocean, misty in the evening. It's yep. like you're in a, a, a white room with no... With no visual cues whatsoever. Yeah, exactly. Auburn traffic, helicopter full on Whiskey Bravo, taking the active. Auburn. All right, get us out there. Let's do a nice, nice, slow, beautiful takeoff. You got it. so good. No, but not bad either. Not bad either. You felt where transverse flow was coming in. You corrected a little bit to the right instead of to the left, but you still got that forward in. Yeah, we had a little bit of a wiggle there, but nothing bad. That was still good, man. Still much, much better than they ever have been before. Watch your uh, power there. Yeah. Yep, it still wants to climb without all that power, so. Yep. All right, so this time we're going to do a low approach running landing. A who? A low approach running landing. Low approach running landing, okay? Yep. You will have to explain that to me. I will. I'll, I'll kind of help you out on this first one. We'll, kinda, we'll do it together. And so basically, a low approach running landing, the purpose of it 
is to simulate a power limited day or, the, or in a real situation because you are in a power limited day. Power limited, what does that mean? Could mean that uh, we're heavy. It's or, hot, we're heavy. Exactly. Uh, all kinds of stuff. Up at high altitude, anything like that. And so normally, as you know, when we do a normal approach, we make our approach down to a stabilized three to five foot hover, and then we either exit the taxi or the runway or we set down or whatever, right? So a low approach running landing, the idea is that we don't have the power to do that hover. We don't have you don't the power have the power to, to uh, uh, do a approach and stop in a hover. Exactly. Auburn traffic helicopter 401 Whiskey Bravo, uh, right down one, one six Auburn. Uh, lights out, 104, 3 green. Auburn traffic, 1 until Papa taking runway 16 for a uh, north downward departure, Auburn. Power heat up. All right. So, yeah, we don't have the power to stop at a hover. So what does that mean? Well, it means that we need to keep ETL and come all the way down to the runway. We've got skid plates like quarter-inch thick pieces of steel yep. on the bottom of the skids. It's like, you know, brake pad material or something yeah, like that. something like that, yeah. So, uh, so basically, yeah, that's, and that's what those are designed for. So they're designed, this thing is designed to slide. So, the, the super important factors uh, in doing a low pro turning landing are the pedals. Very, very, very important to keep the pedals. Yeah, because you don't want to hit. You don't want to slide sideways and, and roll over. So the pedals have to be laser focused right down that runway center line or whatever your ground track is, depending on where you're landing. You're clear left. Auburn Traffic Helicopter, 401 Whiskey Bravo, turning right base final, 1-6 Auburn. And the other thing is that it is a low approach. So you're used to doing, you're used to it this way, what a normal approach angle is, right? And yeah, it, but it, when we, when we uh, did the Pappy lights there, that was like an airplane that approach, was, which was much lower. Which is a low approach, yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. Want to pop and, turn and, cross and, over. and you can probably pretty much follow those pappy lights in and get a good low approach to the angle. Basically, the way that we generally think about it is, again, splitting this area here from the compass to the top of the panel, split that into thirds. When we do a normal approach, that landing spot of the windsock is in that middle third. Yeah. And when we do a low approach, that spot is going to come up, so it's going to be in the top. It's going to be up third here. Up, yeah. Yep. So let's start coming Auburn, down here. So we're still going to still going to work to uh, uh, basically end our slide right about where the windsock is. So let's get low here. So right about about there. Now do you, do you see where that windsock is on our bubble? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot higher. It's almost up. Exactly. By the compass, exactly. a little bit lower. So this is this is a low approach angle right here. So we're gonna just follow this in. So feel what I'm doing. Just kind of yeah. everything, you know. Normal. You're just you're you've got a flatter hypotenuse. Yes, that's exactly right. That's and you're exactly keeping your right. speed up a little higher. Yeah. So we're gonna still slow down some, but we're not gonna slow down too much. We're gonna keep it around 20 knots. And your manifold pressure is way down. Yeah, exactly. Because we're not we're not gonna hover, right? All right. So we got 20 knots. I don't want to hit hard, so I want to pull that power in. Li aligning with the pedals, and we just come all the way down just like we're doing a set down. And there we go. We got a little slide going. If you're going to drift off, you can correct that with cyclic. And to stop the movement, you just slowly push down on collective. Right. And that's pushing down on collective is like clamping down on the brakes. Pretty much. Pretty much. Okay. All right. So Pick us up. Let's go do another one of those. Does that all kind of kind of make sense? What we're doing and why and what's important? It does, yeah. Okay. And I I get how it's really important that um, you absolutely do not touch down sideways because that could yep. be like an instant dynamic rollover. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. We do not want to do that. And you do have to be careful. There are some runways that have this weird. Um, I don't know if it's, it's uh, I'm assuming it's the channel water or something off the runway, but they've got like... Oh, they've got grooves in them. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's the um, channel water away from your, from the tires. So, okay, and that's what, I, that's what I figured. 
on those kind of runways, you really don't want to do a running landing if you can help it, because uh, that sucks. Like, it's it's way more bumpy, and you feel like you're going to, like, rock forward. Yeah. So if I was in a, like, if I was going to an airport, and I know it had a grooved runway like that, and I knew I was going to have to do uh, a running landing, I would find somewhere on the taxiway to do it, because the taxiway is probably not going to be grooved like that. It yeah. would just be normal asphalt, and, th and that's what I would do. Auburn traffic helicopter 41 Whiskey Bravo, right downwind, 16 Auburn. Lights out, 104, uh, 3 green. So, for that, it might be easier to just kind of use your thigh as a reference and just reach right down your thigh inside the kind of inside the collective. Yeah, you're okay. Kind of, you're kind of coming I've, around I've, the far side. I've had a couple different instructors tell me reach around the collective so you don't disturb it. and. But I, I guess it kind of depends on... It kind of depends. I mean, just be cognizant of where the collective is and don't whack it on the way down, you know what I mean? But I feel like, because it's, like, it's almost right under your leg. So if you go right down your leg, you should be able to grab that thing. Go ahead and try it. Yeah. Traffic helicopter for the whiskey, four miles north, 500 feet, can be in Bundle and Auburn. Auburn traffic helicopter four one whiskey Bravo turning right base to final one six Auburn. So if we were in an airplane, this is the right place to be right here. Uh, we're now just a little bit high. Yeah, both sets of lights are white. Okay, yeah, the, the back set just went... Just went white, yeah. So we need that back set, the far set to be red, and the close set to be white. Hover traffic helicopter 0045 Kilo, turning right downwind for 16 Hover. Traffic helicopter Fernal Whiskey is two miles to west at 500 feet, straight to final 16 traffic permitting Auburn. Auburn traffic helicopter Fernal Whiskey Bravo is short final 16 Auburn. hypotenuse all the way down. Uh, helicopter on long, final at Auburn, what's your location? About uh, one, one and a half miles to the north. Uh, Roger, I see you. Um, we're currently... Right, get we'll, those pedals aligned. I'm going to talk to the taxiway anyhow. Get that, get that left pedal in there. We want to be right, right directly down center line. Traffic, helicopter, funnel whiskey, right. final taxiway parallel 166. Good Robert. speed right here, just keep Our coming down. Perfect low, turn right base for 166 hours. Well, don't want to bounce, so once we kind of hit, there we go. So we can fix that drift with the cyclic there. That is weird. Well, different, huh? 
Yeah. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pick us up real quick because I want to get out of the way of uh, these guys. Okay. But uh, we might have time for. Your permit kilo turning final one six over. Auburn traffic helicopter one six Bravo on the go one six right close traffic Auburn. All right, you got him. Traffic got helicopter corner whiskey short final taxiway way parallel one six Auburn. Ten thirty three. I think we got time for one more and then we'll call again. Sounds good to me. So this uh, um, addition on our house, it's like 720 square feet, right? So oh, wow. It's not very big. Uh, it's a pretty big addition. So, in, in wiring it, I figured, oh, okay, I'll just go buy, you know, a 250-foot coil of, of 12 gauge and 14 gauge. Okay. Should be enough. Uh, not quite. <laughs> I think by the time I'm done, I'll probably use a good thousand feet of wire. Oh wow! I mean, you just the stuff gets eaten up so quickly when you're you know going around corners behind studs. Sure. So you you do all the wiring before. Uh I mean, basically, just the, you just got the frame up at this point, right? That's when you usually do the wiring, or oh yeah, yeah, it's it's all it's framed in, uh, but there's no drywall, no insulation or oh, anything. Yeah, okay. Auburn traffic helicopter four hundred one whiskey Bravo, right downwind one six Auburn. Okay. Lights out. Auburn Be traffic helicopter zero four five kilo taxiing to the helipad. Auburn. One four three green. Do you hear that other one coming in land? Uh, There's the chick and the dude. Yeah. I didn't notice if that other one came. I, he had to because he was only two miles out. And I don't see anything. So I think we're good. Hopper traffic helicopter is 045 kilo, clear the runway. What'd she say? Uh, it's helicopter 045 Kilo, clear the runway. Clear the runway, okay. Auburn traffic, helicopter four on Whiskey Robert, joining right base to final, one six, Auburn. I love that man, all those snow dusted mountains out there. Yeah. Two thing I have noticed today, you've been cutting your uh, cutting your corner on final here. What's that now? Just today you just been you've been cutting your corner on final. Yeah. Pretty much, pretty much every time we come around. So we'll just pick up that same uh, same sight picture. That way you start getting used to that. Like that way you know what a low approach looks like, what a regular approach looks like. Traffic hook up 4 5 kilos, taking off helipad for right pattern traffic. We're pulling, pulling some power in there. Get those pedals aligned. We want like a like a 100 foot a minute descent rate when we're doing this one. Because we're doing, you know, 20, 20 or so knots. 
and we're, uh, we're basically, you know, we're going to touch down doing that. So right about here, that's perfect. Just barely let it come down. There we go. All right, a little bit of a hard touch down there, but <laughs> that is weird. <laughs> that's different, huh? All right, give us a nice pick up here. Ah. Are we uh, on the go departure to the north? Yeah. Okay. All right, let's do that again. You get a mulligan on that one. Nice, slow pickup. There's nobody behind us. So you feel that right skid. Your whole side of the helicopter is coming off, right? So you got to fix that. Auburn traffic helicopter is 045 Kilo, turning right downwind for 16 Auburn. getting a little brain fry too because we've been we've done a lot today i don't want to i don't want to push you past the point of uh where your brain's working and processing stuff and start getting frustrated because then you make counter progress that was a better takeoff this time at least yeah actually that was a really good takeoff so good we'll we'll call it on that note yeah, you should definitely be very happy. Go, go out right on top, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Today is absolutely the best flying I've seen you do, period. I am very happy to hear that. Yeah. Absolutely best set downs I've ever seen you do. Absolutely best approaches I've ever seen you do. And we got to start doing something new because of that. That's good. I'll keep it up. Yep. Helicopter 401 Whiskey Bravo, turning right downwind, departure to the north, Auburn. All right, so while we're just kind of straight level here, go ahead and reach down on the side. Instead of trying to come around the collective and get under, just go down the side of your leg. Yeah, right there. All right, it's it's right. It's right there. Right at the edge of my uh, yeah. leg. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. Like I said, as long as you're cognizant of, you know, where the collective is, you don't just slam your hand down there or something, you'll be just fine. But I see every other time you're trying to come around the collective and you're like, you're, you're tumbling around yeah, looking for the Yeah, thing. exactly. So you, you don't want to do that. So if you just remember, it's just right down the side of my leg. Oh, there it is. Good to go. Make that easier for you. Okay. Lights out. 104. Three green. And the car heat is all the way up. There you go. Awesome, man. Making progress. I love it. Yeah, me I too. Love it. Me too. Took me almost 100 hours to get to this point. Yeah. But, but you did it. But, you know, I think there was, uh, when, when um, Travis left and I started flying with you, there was a and I think for the better, but there was a, a big transition because with him, you know, he was having me pick us up at HW ramp and take us out and, and do lots of pickups and set downs and stuff, but I never got the kind of coaching for, like he never told me all the details on how to do a pickup. It was down. like just, you know, anticipate with a little bit of left pedal, yank up the collective, get up in the air, Robert keep traffic. it steady. Helicopter, one alpha hotel, two miles to the north. We're going to give you instruction on how to do that. Just kind of told you to do it, basically. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's not, that, that doesn't really work. You got to explain how to do that shit to somebody. Yeah, so when I started flying with you, it's like, I think I pretty much 
relearned just about everything. Wow. Well, I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that I was able to help you do that. It sucks that you had to get some kind of subpar instruction and that you had to relearn shit. So that's that's part of what made it take longer for you then. Well, you know, if I was like wanting to be on the fast track to get licensed and all that, that would be one thing. But right, hey, I got to fly, so. That's, cool. that's still cool. And that, exactly, and that's been your, your main goal, that you like being up here and doing it. And you know, I tell you, even still, it's been shit. February will be three years since I actually started flying. Three years, and I'm still not tired of it. I still don't get sick of it. Yeah, sometimes I don't want to wake up early and go in, but as soon as I do, and then I go get in a helicopter, I'm totally happy. Yeah. And Absolutely. Being, being up here, even flying over the same stuff, I still don't get sick of looking at it. Like every day, I still love it. Yeah, that's. All, I mean, I have to pitch myself. Am I really fucking doing this? Yeah, right. I'm flying a helicopter. I get to see all this shit that nobody else gets to see. Yeah. Other than other helicopter pilots, because airplane pilots don't see the world the way that we do. They don't get the views that we do. Not at all. Long Acres traffic, helicopter 4 and Whiskey Bravo, northbound crossing I-167, 600 feet, Long Acres. Yeah, especially, you know, when, when people have told me, like, ha, 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 you know, hovering a helicopter is, like, so hard. And, you know, they're right, it is, when you're first learning. Yeah. And so when I'm, like, when we're hovering off the ground and, and I'm having a good day, I'm like, Holy shit. Like, I'm doing this. I can do this? Yeah. You know, I haven't, uh, I haven't looked it up in a long time, so I don't know, uh, I don't know what the current number is or whatever, but I remember my, my instructor when I was doing my private, uh, he told me that there were, I believe the number he gave me was 23,000 commercial helicopter pilots in the entire country. 23,000? 23,000. 23, well, that's, that's commercial, so maybe... Long Acres traffic, helicopter 401 Whiskey Bravo, northbound, Sardis Piles, Long Acres. So maybe, maybe, you know, you add on the amount of people going through training and stuff. Let's say it's 30,000, even if it's 50,000. I don't think it is, but even if it is, let's say it's 50,000 people that fly helicopters out of how many? 330 million? 300 million. I don't know what the fraction on that is, but I'm sure it's pretty it's fucking not small. not much. Right? Yeah. But yeah, when I think about stuff like that, like, that makes me happy as fuck. We're part of an elite group. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, should, uh, we should definitely get some ADIS. In the flight, all aircraft free back, hold short instructions. Advise on initial contact you have, go back. Go back. Only deal with information, go back. 1753 Zulu. Wind 150 at 11. Visibility 10. 1600 scattered. Feeling 3000 broken. 10000 broken. Temperature. I don't really care about the rest of that. Alright, you're on Boeing. You make your call when you're ready. Okay. Cutlass 1 Hotel Papa, frequency change through, have a safe flight. Uh, thanks for your help and not laugh at my screw up. 1 Hotel Papa. Well, on Tower Helicopter 41 Whiskey Bravo, Long Acres for HW Ramp, Rainier Arrival with what? Quebec. With Quebec. Cuck 41 Whiskey Bravo, Boeing Tower, Rainier approved, report South Wires. Rainier approved, report South Wires, 41 Whiskey Bravo. And remember, once they uh, once they come back and say your tail number, you can drop to the last three. You can just say one whiskey bravo. Oh yeah, okay. And that's why again, when we get to uh, to the South Wires and report that, all I say is tower, one whiskey bravo, bravo South, South Wires. That's it. That's really all they need to hear. Yeah, you're just trimming all the fat off. You know, they've, they've got a lot of calls coming in and out. They're busy. Uh, it's just, it's easier easier to say. It's just less. So it's just you know just trimming the fat off and boom. That's the important part. That's what you need. There you go. Done. Uh, 
Now that looks cool. A little bit of sunlight on the floating bridge. Yeah, yeah, it's all well, nice and bright. Almost looks like a summer day. Time to go get the boat. Yeah. So if all the Auburn guys hate helicopters, it looks like there's at least two helicopters that live down there. Yeah, there's classic helicopters. Is, is that that's their home base now? So. I, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, to me, it's like, okay, dudes, deal with it. Yeah, exactly. We're These, part of, this is part of general aviation. Exactly. It's part of general aviation. Stop being a little fucking bitch about it. Be a goddamn grown-up and a professional. Yeah. If, if you don't like helicopters, that's just too fucking bad. We're not going away. Stop acting like a fucking elementary school child that's, oh, teacher, he's not playing on the swings the way we want him to. Kick him off the playground. Eat a fucking dick. Yeah. Yeah, man, it, it just makes me hate airplane guys even fucking more. I feel like in general they are uh, less educated on aviation, uh, make stupider fucking decisions by far. Whiskey Boeing Tower, good afternoon, runway 14 right, clear to land, wind 140 at 9 Less educated? Less educated in education, because a lot of them are just private pilots. A lot of the Yahoo's that you see flying around in the Auburn shit, they're just private pilots. Uh, okay, they yeah. don't have like, like, yeah. you, you've got all ratings. Yeah, exactly. No, granted, you got flight instructors down there, but... Tower, one whiskey, Bravo, South Flyers. But a lot of the other Yahoo's flying around in the RVs and the... One whiskey, Bravo, wind 140 at 10, at 5, clear to land. One whiskey, Bravo, clear to land. Um... Uh, yeah, so you know you, you you've got you've got some flight instructors and that kind of stuff like I said, but yeah, a lot of a lot of the other guys flying around in, uh, in their little airplanes that own them and shit, doctors and lawyers, they got a private license and that's it. Well, also my impression is that you know small airplanes. They, in a lot of ways, kind of fly themselves. Yeah. But helicopters don't, not yeah. even close. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, you can you can spin the trim knob and basically just let go of the controls and just sit there and fucking re read a book, draw a doodle. Well, that's not flying. here it's going to be a descending left turn okay. descending slowing down left turn all right go ahead and cut it on in we need to cut this just a little bit more here so we don't end up over the runway there and one more awesome approach yep Senior Alpha Kilo Whiskey, turn left Alpha 4 or Alpha 7, cross runway 1 for left, and contact ground point 9, have a great day. There we go. We're a little bit high, started kind of coming down vertical, but it's still not bad at all. You caught the pedals, everything. Nice job, man. Okay. All right. Kilo Whiskey, just for clarification. Take us over there. You, point you, you, see, you know what the red box is and it says wings above it? Yeah. Let's park on that line.
Let's just steer clear of this truck here. Yep. Get a little bit further over this way. Air 4 is off Renton for Mount Baker Tunnel. Air 4, Boeing Tower, good morning, sir. Transition approved, Boeing Altimeter 300. So, this line, like... 3008 for Air so 4. So, basically, like, we're going to kind of line up with that red thing. So, let's do... Let's do this row right here. Give us a little right pedal turn. All right, and then let's go up to not the spot we're above, not the next one, but the one after. The one, uh... The two up from where we are. Not this one. The one where the people are? No, 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 right there, right here, right oh, here. Oh, right here, okay. Like the, the square's on the ground. So this one right here, let's put her down right in this spot. There we go. It's always, always harder to do a set down here. Sierra Boeing Tower, stay with five. Two reasons. One, it's the last set down of the day. You've been working hard, your brain's tired. Two, it's mental. There's all this shit around. We got buildings, people, other helicopters, all this stuff. Yeah. So no matter what, pretty much always, when you and come back in here, it's, it's a little more intimidating. It is. Side of the bay, traffic inbound on the island. And uh, yeah, coming down in here will almost always be your worst set down of the day. Yeah. Well, I can definitely see how that, because that there's a big crowd of people over there and there's like other helicopters like right next to me and if I just go like that I'm gonna wipe out yeah about a million dollars worth of hardware exactly <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it is it's just it's nerve-wracking and this is a lot of schools are not like this a lot of other places have much more open areas that they park everything ours is like we just stack everything right next to each other yeah which in my opinion I actually kind of like because it's it's more difficult and it makes you better at flying and, and you, you, after a while you get over it and then you're not so nervous if you have to come and sit down next to something else. Uh, but definitely other places that I've gone, yeah, you got like big, huge open ramp area, you know, there's nothing near you you're going to hit. Uh, a lot less intimidating. Easier, but, you know, you don't get as good. Right. It's when you have to work for it. Exactly. Almost. Yeah, got another little bit. Yeah, you should uh, you should definitely go home and uh, have a beer or do something to celebrate today because this is this is a good day, man. Good flight. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna go home and start pulling wires again. <laughs> but uh, there you go. I'm actually almost done. Nice. I'm to the point where I'm going to pull, like, network cables and stuff like that, too. Nice, man. Because, hey, if it's all open, you might as well I'll get make it, it exactly the way I want it. Yeah, no shit. Okay, so we are... Yep, you're good. You can go ahead and uh, roll down and pop your clutch. Nope, 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 nope. Keep that left hand back here. Yeah. There you go. Always, always, always. Because you want to be in control of that. Those RPMs, you want to be in control of that. You don't want to let something happen that you didn't intend. So you just always, always left hand here. Everything else is yeah, right Yeah, because I over... Okay, so we started on the four. So, I, I, roll, I rolled it down on the four. So start pull on the nine, off by the ten. There we go. Leave the master on, but yep, there you go. So you got another one at 11? Uh, no, actually today I don't. I'm gonna go home and uh Go home and uh, look up some uh, some. I've been. I uh, just got into uh, trading cryptocurrencies. I've got. Oh. Uh, okay. I've got two buddies that I just recently uh, found out have been doing it for a while, and uh, they're both millionaires. Really? Yeah. So my buddy Ben back in Vegas, uh, he's he's been, he had been trading 
other stuff. He was trading Forex, like foreign exchange market. He was trading, trading that for about eight years. So he knows what he's doing as far as trading code goes in general. Uh, but he started trading cryptocurrencies in March of last year and he is he made 2.2 million dollars in since march holy shit yeah exactly and then my uh another really good real uh, long long term friend of mine uh down in california i just found out he's been doing it for about a year and a half well he doesn't have a job anything that, that's what he does who's using i mean like there's no place I could walk into and, and pay with a Bitcoin. So, uh, I've been learning a lot about all of it and what it all is and stuff. So, Bitcoin was designed pretty much just as a currency. And there are some places that you can actually use Bitcoin. There's some places online. There's some actual brick and mortars that you can even go use Bitcoin. Okay. Uh, but, that So, it's, like, it's, it's out there, but it's not pervasive. Yeah. Bitcoin was the first one. So, it paved the way it got everything started. Uh, but as far as actual technology wise, there are a lot of other coin coins that are that are far exceeding what Bitcoin ever did. And so there's a lot of different coins out there now and you can start researching them and you look at the team that created it, what their goal is, and, you know, if they're a legitimate team and they're they're trying to do something with it. So one of the big one the other big ones is called Ethereum. And one of the main differences between that and Bitcoin is that one is called uh, they call it programmable money. So instead of just being a currency, you have things like smart contracts. So a smart contract is essentially you and I go into business and we agree upon certain terms. I'm going to pay you X amount and we, oh shit. I thought, the, I thought the rotor brake broke off in your hand. No, I was like, oh no. shit. <laughs> I, I snapped it off by uh, <laughs> unplugging my. Um, so yeah, so, so we enter into a contract and then we basically set the terms uh, into the program essentially and when the terms are met the money is automatically transferred to you There's no middleman. There's oh, no, cool. oh, you fucked me. It didn't pay me. Now I got to go get a lawyer and all that. There's none of that It just it just yeah once the terms are met the money is transferred you agree on it, it at first and once you agree That's what's gonna happen exactly once you agree and put that into the program. That's that's what happens so That's one of the uses for it. There are a whole bunch of different uses. So that's one that's actually gonna be a, a, a usable viable technology Bitcoin is like, no, it, it, there's actually a little bit less people using it as a, as a currency now than there used to be. So it's kind of losing some support in that sense. Yeah. Um, but the, the point is that the market in general, it does kind of similar things to what the stock market does, except that in the stock market, if you see, you know, 8% returns over the course of a year, you're like, you're happy. That's a good return, right? Well, in cryptocurrency, you're sometimes seeing two to 20 or 50 X on your investment in the course of a month or a couple months or sometimes even a few days. But I'll bet that's only gonna, that, that can't last forever. It it's probably gonna forever. be that way for a few years exactly. until everything shakes out. But man, yeah, if you, get, if you get into it- It's a market like a motherfucker right if now. If you get into it now. Exactly, and that's why I'm getting into it. 